Fox 34 Football Friday, presented by McGavick Nissan. It's 10 o'clock, and it's time for Fox 34 Football Friday. And the Westerners look to put last week behind them as Shane Stevens Club was able to bounce back against the Borger team that only won a single game last year. Shallow Water lost its first game of the season for the first time since 2016. How they responded against Leveland. And Coronado looks to get back on its feet after a close loss to Estacado. If the Mustangs could compete and the, uh, handle the tough task at Lubbock Cooper. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fox 34 Football Friday. I'm Rob Averby. And I'm Kurt Kaiser. Last year, when Coronado and Lubbock Cooper met, the Pirates won that one 43-42 in overtime, Rob. Yep, these two playoff teams meeting again tonight. Let's head to Woodrow, shall we, and check out the action. There was a lot of action in this one, Kurt. Yes, sir. The obligatory how-you-doing shot. LCP with the ball early. Direct snap goes to number 20, Nehemiah Martinez, and this guy can move. Check it out. Breaks free, and he is gone. 32 yards, capping a four-play, 75-yard drive. Pirates up 7-0. Stangs would answer. Sawyer Robertson hooks up with Eli Martinez. 11-play, 75-yard drive. Game tied at 7. But the Pirates come right back. Early second quarter, there's that guy, Nehemiah Martinez. Off tackle, 49 yards to the house. What a run there. He would find daylight. Coronado right back. Robertson again to Martinez. You get the trend here? I do. Oh, Going back and forth, yeah. But at last check, Coronado would fall in this one, the final 35 to 21. I mean, two very good football teams right there, Kurt. Back Absolutely. and forth. An incredible game. Our Cassie Carlson is out there right now. Cassie, uh, your thoughts on, on the matchup tonight between uh, uh, Coronado and uh, the Cooper Pirates? Yeah, Rob, well, Isaiah Johnson told us at the beginning of the season, watch out for fellow running back Nehemiah Martinez. The senior did not get to play last year because he transferred from New Deal, was not granted eligibility. However, in front of Matt Wells and David Yost recruiting for Texas Tech tonight, he had four carries for 90 yards and two touchdowns like he just showed in the first half. And those two TDs came when Cooper was lined up in a wildcat formation. And then he punched it in for a touchdown. Isaiah Johnson punched in two more as well. And then Rylan Wilcox playing some strong D with a pick six. Now, Seth Parr said after the Estacado loss last week, he really wanted to emphasize passion to his football team. He was going to emphasize that this entire week, reflect on how he was bringing energy to this team, and he wanted them to play with the passion, not swag, that he felt like they were lacking last week as they come up just short at Lubbock Cooper tonight. So now the Lubbock Cooper Pirates, they defend their turf for the second year in a row against the Coronado Mustangs, 35-21. From Pirate Stadium, Cassie Carlson, Fox 34 Sports, guys. <laughs> All right, and let's head now to Pampa. Estacado on the road in Pampa. Estacado, big win last week. First quarter, Pampa driving. Quarterback Tucker Bridwell airs it out to Joey Hill for a first down and more. A few plays later, it's Bridwell again. This time, he scrambles. He throws it to Brayson Marak for a first down, a pickup of 20 yards. Later on, he will hand it off to Caleb Caldwell from three yards out. He stretches it across the goal line for the TD. 7-0 with the point after. Now, Estacado is driving. Quarterback Jalen Dobbins will hit T.J. Steeles. He runs it for 25 yards right up the gut of that Pampa defense. And then Dobbins on the keeper. He runs around the right side. Bulldozes forward for the touchdown. And with the point after, we are tied 7-7, the latest score we have there with Estacado and Pampa. And well, now we're headed to talk about the Westerners. Yes, we are. And the Westerners, they had a rough week one, falling to Seminole 57-7. Now, earlier at the Lubbock ISD luncheon this week, head coach Shane Stevens said that loss was hard. There was no other way to describe it. But the best thing for his guys was to forget about it. And what's a better way to forget about it than get back out there and play another football game? Let's go to the action at Lowry Field. Lubbock High taking on Borger. 0-1 on the year are the Bulldogs. They were 1-9 all of last year. First drive for them. In Westerner territory, Cameron Chambers getting the give, cutting back towards the near sideline and gets all the way in for the score. They're up 7-zip, but the Westerners, though, they would respond. A four-play, 92-yard drive ending with a Keith Ramirez eight-yard rushing touchdown. Lubbock High tying the game up at seven. So now, here, guys, this is something interesting. We'll go later in the second, same score. A 
snap going over the punter's head. It goes all the way out of bounds for a safety. So not only does Shane Stevens' club take a 9-7 lead, but that's the first lead of the year for Lubbock High. And last check, Borger, though, on top, 33-16 with four minutes to go. Tough times for Lubbock High, guys. All right, thank you very much, John. Let's check out Seminole and Idaloo, two tough teams here. Jason Mejia takes the handoff, gets a nice run, setting up the Indians for a first and goal. Watch it there, he's finally brought down. Quarterback Cy Kramer will throw it right over the defender to Cason Andrews for the touchdown. That made it 13-7 to Indians. Idaloo's next possession, Dylan Lopez would fumble the ball before passing it to Phoenix Fabula for a big Wildcats touchdown. They would try for two but the ball would bounce out. Luckily, they were able to regain possession. They missed the extra point. Final score, Seminole wins it 22 to 21, Rob. And I believe we have uh, Kingdom Prep and Lorenzo. Quarterback Sam Griffith uh -oh. is gonna fumble the ball back on top there for a big loss. And the next play, well, he's gonna send a deep pass down the field, looking for a man, Kurt Kaiser, but it's picked Pick off by Julian Herrera, Lorenzo went for it on fourth down, did not convert due to some wild snaps causing a turnover. That happens from time to time, Kirk Kaiser. That was a wild snap. It You're was right. indeed. And uh, you know, you try to make lemons, lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> <laughs> turnover on down, sets up the ball on the two yard line. McKellen Bundy will score. Lorenzo will fall to King to prep in this one, the final 54 to 42. It is week two. Demet and Olton squaring off. In Olton, the home team was up seven to nothing. Demet would fumble on their very first drive, but running back Jose Mendoza would scoop it up, turns it into a big gainer. There he is, finally brought down. A few plays later, quarterback Mario Pena will let it fly. He hooks up with wide receiver Nick Fuentes for the easy score there. Fuentes would take it in. Demet would go for two with Pena tossing it to wide receiver Marcos Antiveros. He will get it on the reach. I just have a feeling he's going to get it on the reach, and that would put the Bobcats Wait up 8-7. to seven. Watch him reach. He's coming. There it was. He reached it in. High-scoring back-and-forth affair. Olton up right now, 31-26. to 26. Olton would go up to 38-34 to 34 starting the fourth quarter. Strike up the band, Kurt. Let's head to Slayton. Homecoming for the Tigers. Do you remember your homecoming? I do. Fantastic. Big crowd was on hand, yep. just like there. Late, yep. late first half comes with the ball up 13-0. Nice run here. Jeremiah Mendez, the senior, picking up quality yards. A few plays later, though, the Cubbies implode. Oh, Nelly, bad snap. Fumble, Brownfield. Well, they would fall tonight 13-12, a close game right there in Slayton. Well, coming up, Monterey's offense continues its rampage. How Corian Bailey has developed his game and why Coach Hutch and his team is giving him a bigger reason to be more than cautiously optimistic. Jared Luft will be breaking down the Plainsman's win over Abilene Wiley and will dissect what the team's ceiling is. And if the Lobos were able to come back in the second half after trailing to shallow water late in the third quarter. You're watching Fox 34 Football Friday with Rob Verby, Kurt Kaiser, Cassie Carlson, and John Sokoloff, Fox 34 Football Friday. First and most comprehensive, this is Fox 34 Football Friday. And welcome back. Shallow Water Football lost a lot of starters last season, and despite all the turnover, Brian Wood's team looking strong last week. That's right. They weren't strong enough. They fell, they fell to Idaloo 28-22 in the home opener, but tonight got a chance for some redemption. Shallow Water taking on Level Land from Todd Field. We'll start the game off in the third quarter for you with the game all tied at 14. Dylan Kelly would find Maverick Bryan in the back corner of the end zone for six. The Mustangs were up at that time, 21 to 14. Shallow Water defense was really big, stepping up big in the second half of this game. They stuffed Level and Skylar Davis in the backfield right there for a loss on the play. 21-14 late in the third. Mustangs would go ahead and end up winning this ball game 28-20. Shallow Water. What a game there. All righty, let's head to Roosevelt. Cheerleaders doing what they do. Hello, Mr. Eagle. Eagle's first possession inside. Jacob Torres, the handoff. Look out. There he is. He's got daylight, and he's going to find the happy place. PAT was no good. 6-0 Eagles. Toka would answer right back. Hand off to Malik Hamilton. Looks like Jakeem Grant, Kurt. 
Speed does kill. Impressive. That's what they say. Yeah. yeah. There he goes. PAT was good. 7-6 Bulldogs. Eagles fly back down the field. Torres at quarterback. Quick slant. Kenyon Taylor. Two-point conversion, though, was no good. 12-7 Roosevelt. Bulldogs bite back. Malik Hamilton again finds an opening, and he's going to find the end zone to Hoka. Up 14-12, they would win by one, the wow. final 21-20. Another close one. We're headed out now to Greg Sherwood Memorial Stadium in Plainview. Paladuro in town. Strike up the band. Well, where'd the band go? There, we told you it's Greg Sherwood Memorial Stadium. We can see that it's the stadium. We've lost the band, Rob. We've lost the band, <laughs> and we've lost the game. But I'll tell you what was happening. The dogs were up 21-19. Uh, we apparently don't have the highlight. Well, there we go. There's the band. The band, the band was warming up. They, That's it. Yeah. They struck up. They did strike up, finally. The dogs were up 21-19. to 19. Israel Guevara with the stiff arm gets the first down. And so, oh, you can get some souvenirs there for the Bulldogs. Why not? Yeah. Same drive. Danny Dilworth goes all the way to the corner, and that would bring the Dons within two. However, the extra point attempt will be blocked. There we go. They didn't make the extra point. Jaden Lara takes it back for the safety all the way. Many flags were tossed while we were there. PD makes good on the long bus drive. The Dons would come back to win that one in plain view, 32 to 28. And the Crest Kangaroos hosting the Owls from Headley. Mr. Kangaroo in the uh, Friday Night Spirit. First quarter up 6-0. Roos try to double the lead. Cody Bond with the great open field stop right there on fourth down as the ball goes back to the Owls. However, they would get the ball back. Colton Scott, just like Malcolm Butler in Super Bowl 49. Check out these buckets. Uh, they were they were snazzy. There are the buckets. Uh, kangaroo number five with the ball. <laughs> I guess we don't know his name. Yeah. Right into your living room or Very kitchen. Memorable. We apologize for that, but uh, yeah, that's a nice run right there. And it's going to set up this Kirk Kaiser, a five-yard scamper by the home team. Doubles their lead. Is Hot as flaming hot Cheetos. That's hot. Yeah, more on that uh, a little later, I guess. Uh, KHS gets the win. 48-36, Press the winner in that one tonight. After defeating the Bulldogs of Abilene Wiley last night, 49-26, the Plainsmen are now 2-0 for the first time since 2016. Now, Rob, in two games, they put up 104 points. It's a lot of points. first two, and they looked really impressive, especially offensively. Senior quarterback at Carrion Bailey has been the anchor for that offense. He had 350 all-purpose yards, five touchdowns in last night's win, and you can just tell his accuracy on the deep ball is better. The steps he's taken to improve his game have been catching the eye of head coach Wayne Hutchinson. As far as the pass rush, looked like they had us balled, bottled up, and he just scrambled out, and he's, he's, he's got great vision on the football field, and he's very accurate running uh, while he's running and, and scrambling. Found some open guys, extended that play, and uh, that's when you got a guy like that, you're never in a bad play. The Plainsman hit the road to take on Clovis next week. Yes, that's right. The Plainsmen are rolling, rolling along this year, as we said, outscoring their opponents 104-39. Garrett Luff, the high school football guru, joining us now. And uh, Garrett, is it too early to call Coach Hutch's crew the real deal? No, I don't think so at all. I think that offense is absolutely legitimate. Corian Bailey is, is definitely an incredible quarterback. You don't have to have a great offensive line at all. I think they have a pretty good one when you got a guy that can get out of the pocket and make things happen. And I don't know that Monterey has the best receiving core in all of West Texas, but I think with that group led by Tyree Tipton and Donovan Hill, they have the deepest wide receiver set of any group out here in our area. So I think they've got a lot of firepower and the ability to really rack up some points. I think that they're just beginning to, to, to kind of show what they're going to be able to do this year. Garrett, let's talk Talk about motivation. Do you think part of the reason the success they've had in the first two games was missing the playoffs last year and kind of getting a little bit of a chip on their shoulder? Yeah, no, no doubt about it, especially when you know your crosstown rival in Coronado has the runs that they had the last two years. You experienced that two years ago if you're Monterey, but then last year four and six was not uh, really acceptable for that group. And you have a lot of young guys on that team that have now developed some leadership and some experience, and they're very hungry. And their, their goals are really high if you talk to just about anybody on that group. All right, Garrett, we'll chat with you a bit later about that Coronada Cooper game in Woodrow. What All a game right. that was. Thank you very much, sir. Red Raiders are 34-point favorites over UTEP later on Fox 34 Football Friday, a preview of what to expect from the Miners' trendy defense. And Monterey taking character building to new heights. Coming up, John Sokoloff got a look at Manly Monday and how Wayne Hutchinson 
is teaching his kids about life off the field. Now, back to Fox 34 Football Friday. While football teaches life lessons and builds character on the field, Wayne Hutchinson's staff at Monterey is showing their players non-football skills that he hopes will also help the on-field product, but more importantly, help his boys become men. When you, uh, you, you're going out on a date and you want to look sharp, you need to have your clothes ironed. It can't be all From 7.20 to 7.50 each Monday, Hutchinson decided to start Manly Mondays, where his staff teaches their players things that will prepare them for adulthood. The lesson changes each week, and this week, Coach Kevin Pittman sat them down to give them a lesson on ironing. When I went, went off to college, you know, I had that skill. I knew how to iron and, and could do it. I didn't even uh, ask Coach Pittman. Uh, he just volunteered. He said, hey, I've got a good one. I want to do ironing this week. And I said, man, that's great. Let's get it done. While Hutchinson believes they are learning useful skills, he says these tasks can directly correlate with team success. When kids come in here, they're, they're uh, collaborating with one another. They're seeing the same things and talking and, and just building relationships. And, and, you know, that part about uh, the Manly Mondays, I think, will carry back out on the field. We preach and we coach football and uh, they need to see us in a different light, too. They don't need to see us just as the football coach. They need to say, hey, this guy's also giving me some daddy skills, some parenting skills, some just real life skills besides X's and O's. All right, so definitely something interesting going like on it. there with the Plainsmen. Uh, their, their next Manly Monday test, they didn't have anything to be determined yet. Hutchinson says they'll either learn how to change a light switch or a ceiling fan. Both tough things. I don't know how yeah. to do either. To I, be don't, I don't know honest how to you. do either, and I'm still looking at that iron. Rob Verby, do you know what an iron is? Have you ever used an iron? Well, before? I learned from Mama Verb many Did years you? ago. Yeah. But I don't iron much. Okay. Yeah. It's... But I was on a road trip a few years ago, and my pants were so wrinkled I couldn't leave the hotel room. How wrinkled room. were they? They were so wrinkled that I grabbed the hotel room iron and I ironed them. There you That's go. That's what there I did. You go. Good right. job. Last time you used an iron. I sure did. That was it. And from irons to uh, concession stand champs at the very edge of our viewing area, Crest Junior High cheer with the cheese nachos. Just look at all that cheesy, cheesy. goodness, will oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Fans impressive. in Swisher County had the chance to enjoy the delicious snack as the Roos hopped to the victory. That's cheesy as well. And that's why, because they had the cheese, they hopped I the think victory. someone's yeah. trying to say I'm very cheesy. Yeah. All right. The Red Raiders have won their last seven meetings with UTEP, Kurt. Coming up next, a look at the history of the teams and the last time the Miners topped the Red Raiders. Now, back to Fox 34 Football Friday. 16-6-1 all-time versus the Miners, plus riding a seven-game win streak. Red Raiders look to go 2-0 in the young season, facing UTEP tomorrow night. Now you have to go all the way back to 1957, the last time Tech lost to UTEP. My hair was dark. No, I was dark. It wasn't, I wasn't even there. 26-14 <laughs> in El Paso was the score then. Red Raiders are favored by 34 points tomorrow. Scarlet and Black coming off a convincing win over Montana State, while the Miners eked out a two-point win at home over Houston Baptist. And here's the QB and the OC on the UTEP defense. They play five DBs in the game, so it's going to be it's going to be exciting and fun um, to go against. You kind of don't know where they're going or where they're coming from. They'll roll to a bunch of different coverages, so um, a lot of different coverages. But yeah, we go so fast, so we'll see if they can get lined up. It's got six guys kind of playing the run really hard, and then they got those five defensive backs kind of all back there in kind of an umbrella mode a lot of times, and different ones are coming down at different times. So it's a very deceptive looking defense. Disguising coverage is, is a plus for them. Us being able to recognize blitzes, it's harder because everybody has a stack behind them, so it's not, I mean, when you're dealing with four guys, you normally go, okay, that guy's coming because there's somebody standing behind them. Now you're like, well, there's somebody standing behind everybody. Are they all coming? And sometimes they are, and sometimes they're not. By the way, the hair, I just, you got to comment I, on I that. love that, just, yes. You know, because you couldn't even see his face there I, at the end. He but. has a face. Okay, there you go. <laughs> um, as long as he knows football. He does, he does. This, this cloud defense they got going yep. on, 
this is the defense that, that gave Tech all kinds of problems right. when Iowa State runs it. I mean, yeah. not yeah. UTEP, little, obviously, little with all due, all due respect yeah. to the yeah. minors. But it, 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 it gave Patrick Mahomes all kinds of trouble a right. few years ago and last year as, as well, Alan Bowman, yeah. in Ames. But uh, right. it's a trendy defense. Yeah, it's not a, a great matchup, I guess, scheme-wise. But at the end of the day, this is a UTEP team that the Red Raiders are favored more this week than they were last week against Montana State, 34 points. Last year, UTEP was one, only won one game, and they beat Rice. So uh, definitely a program that's struggling. And we were talking about this the other day. They're not the team that they were a couple of years ago. They've taken big steps back. So mm -hmm. it could be uglier than the Montana State game. Well, there's still some things the Raiders need to work on, though. And I, and I, I like that's the way the coaching staff looks at it. There's things during the game, even if they got the big lead, they're continuing to work on different schemes and different things, kind of using it not, not as a practice. I'm not saying that at all. But, but you have to, to continue to learn. I think that's fair. Yeah. I really do think it's fair to say. I mean, you, you want to respect your opponent. Right. But let's be realistic. When you're favored by 34 points in a game, you should that's, win the game pretty easily. That's a big um, But a I think it is. It's, it's working on your offense. Alan Bowman's yeah. still a young quarterback. All righty, still ahead on the show, Garrett Luff will join us again. One final look at week number two and the game of the week for next week. First and most comprehensive, this is Fox 34 Football Friday. That's right, it is, it is indeed. Welcome back to the show. Checking out some scores from this evening. Week number two, Lubbock Cooper, hard-fought win over Coronado, 35-21. Uh, the Stangs falling to... Uh, 0-2 on the season. Yeah, um, not uh, no one could have predicted that. And Estacado over Pampa, 30 to 24. The Matadors are 2-0. Big road win for Joe Cluley's club. That's for sure. Here we go with Borger and Lubbock High. Borger ends up uh, winning that one, 33 to 23 over the Westerners. And Friendship falls by one point. They scored first in overtime, kicked the extra point. Hershey answered with a score, went for two, and uh, Hershey wins it. 38-37 over the Tigers. Mm. Devastating, devastating game for, for Friendship after the way they started last week. And Lubbock High really looked good in that first half, but falling away in the second. Paladuro beating Plainview 32-28. And Lubbock Christian, how about this? Blanking. Hale Center, 38 zip. That might be the first shot, second shutout we have of the year besides friendship. And it was uh, Olton at home beating Dimmit 52 34, and it was uh, Shallow Water beating Leveland 28 to 20. To Hoke and Roosevelt, that one going to Hoka's way by one point, another one point game, 21 to 20. And Brownfield, the Cubs lose by one point to the Slayton Tigers, 13 to 12. A defensive battle there between Slayton and them. And Abernathy defeating Sundown, taking care of business quite easily, 42 to 9. And the New Deal Lions, man, they keep rolling since after all that great last season they had, defeating Muleshoe, 43 to 12. And it was Denver City 48-14, winners over Littlefield. Tulia gets past Floydata, the world wins 29-21. All right, we go back to Garrett Luff now. And uh, Garrett, what a game tonight in uh, Woodrow between uh, Cooper and Coronado. Yeah, no doubt about it. That final score is a little deceiving. That game was 14-14 heading into the fourth quarter, uh, and Cooper just dominated, scoring uh, three touchdowns in a row to really take control of that game, including a pick six by Ryland Wilcox. Uh, the front seven of Cooper, particularly with Kobe McKenzie there at linebacker, really frustrating the timing of Sawyer Robertson and the Mustang offense. They really had trouble getting on track like they usually do, uh, and Cooper was able to convert with their rushing game. Isaiah Johnson and Nehemiah Martinez are uh, about as good of a 1-2 tandem as there is in the area. Garrett, the uh, Mustangs start off 0-2, not the way you want to start the season. No, but you know, when you look at it, you look at like a Monterey that's 2-0, and they've played two very different schedules, I would say. Uh, Coronado's going to get Odessa High, who, who Monterey got in week one, coming up next. I think that'll help them level off a little bit. Cooper, you know, they're going to get Friendship and then Monterey two weeks in a row. I, I think that they've I, by far got one of the toughest schedules in the area. But I could see Coronado gaining some confidence this week and really regaining some traction as they move forward toward the district season. All right, Garrett, what's our game of the week next week? Well, you know, some of the luster's off of it because Friendship uh, went out to Hershey and got beat tonight. But it's got to be Cooper Friendship. Uh, that's the big one here in the area. But keep an eye on Abernathy and Wellington. 
That's a, a, a top 10 team from 2A and a top 10 team from 3A. That's a game that Wellington won last year over Abernathy. Uh, I think that's probably one of the biggest games in the state, honestly, next week. All right. Thanks, Garrett. Fantastic job once again. You can catch Garrett on Saturday morning quarterback tomorrow morning, 7 to 9 on Double T 97.3. Kicks off our entire day of local sports, including the Tech game itself. And then Garrett will take your reaction afterwards on the Coors Light postgame show. And the high school coverage does not end there. Andreas Flores has the high school fan zone during the week on 100.7 the score. It's Estacado and Coronado Monday evenings. Monterey and Lubbock High, the head coaches, on Tuesdays. Friendship and Lubbock Cooper on uh, Wednesdays, each night starting at 7 o'clock. You can also find those interviews at fox34.com under the sports tab. All right, so we're looking at week two. Uh, it's been an interesting second week and a lot of close ones no tonight. Doubt. Yeah, No doubt, a great game, Coronado and Cooper, those two powerhouses in friendship. Really based on all that momentum they had last week, it was tough to see them fall the way they did in overtime. Yeah. But that's going to be a great matchup. Good rivalry sure, we'll, there. We'll be good. Two. And, of course, it really doesn't matter until district play. That's right. Very right. true. Folks, guns up. Have a great weekend. So long, everybody.